Hey, it's your boy CJ Mello. So on this episode, we have the kids breaking down their review of Five Nights at Freddy, the movie. Yes, the movie. They're going to talk about how they felt about it and all that good stuff. It might give you some of the lore of what happened in this whole movie or the whole gaming series in general. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy. Always remember, like, subscribe, share with everybody what you do, what we do. And um, hey, kids, have fun. Let's go. Hello, everyone. This, the, you see, our dad is doing something upstairs right now. So, this is, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Si- me and my sister will be doing today's episode, broadcasting to you live from our basement. <laughs> Today's subject is the all-new Five Nights at Freddy's film adaptation. Yeah, so what do you think of it, sis? Um... Sis. Once you watch it, like, three times, it gets kind of boring. But the first time I watched it, I screamed at A, the Map Pack cameo. B, the Aquarius Kenshi cameo, and three, when they played the Living Tombstone song for the credits. So, basically, you found that there were not one, not two, but three YouTuber cameos in the film. Yes. Also, you know, the movie was pretty solid. Granted, the jump scare scenes were pretty unexpected. <laughs> Okay, as I was saying, granted, the jump scare scenes were pretty unexpected. And, uh, well, the, and the movie was pretty good overall, right, sis? Yeah. All right, now should I get to the lore dumping? Sure, you do you. All right. (coughs) Welcome to Five Nights at Freddy's Lore Dumping with Ariana Feliciano. Right now, we are going to explain the history of Five Nights at Freddy's. So... Oh crap! Where do I start? Uh, start with the o- start with opening Fred Bear's Family Diner. Oh yeah, two guys own Fred Bear's Family Diner. A bunch of kids died. One of them and got eased out, out of existence. While more kids died, I I the other set the air on fire. Whoa, the rabbit always comes back. <laughs> Sis, I feel like you skimmed through a lot of important stuff during that mm. lore dumping. Okay, you try to explain the lore. Okay, so basically, it all started in the 1970s with these two guys named William Afton and Henry Emily. Can we please stop having interruptions? What? We're children. (laughs) And these guys are a couple of inventors. They're also family men. William Afton has two two do- sons and one daughter, and and Henry Emily has a daughter named Charlotte. Or- Noted. Also, Hen- William Afton does has ha- have a wife that is confirmed, but we do not know who that is. So some people think that uh, he murdered his wife and stuffed her inside of Ballora. Okay. Thank you for that. I told you I was going to be lore dumping. Actually, I'm doing most of it right now. Anyways, I, I, it, in, the, in the 70s, a French restaurant named Fair Fred Bear's Family Diner commissioned all William and Henry to build some Chuck E. Cheese-style animatronics to entertain the children. No, he's getting most of these quotes from Fred Bear. It's FNAF, everything you know, featuring my pad video. I am not. Yes, you are. We just watched it earlier today. All right, fine. Anyways, is there was a yellow rabbit named Bonnie and a yellow bear named Fred Bear. Spring Bonnie. Sorry, Spring Bonnie. And and actually, the the thing Fred Bear's Family Diner becomes a good place to host birthday parties, attracting some real good business to the name. But but you know what that means? Somebody's about to die. Yeah, so, basically, one of the kids named Charlie is left outside of the pizzeria. Guess what happens? Purple car drives up, purple guy gets out. What does he do? He found her locked up in the rain, and then guess what he did? Yes, he... He... 
Do you want to explain it? Well, um... Let's she... just say that what happened next didn't have the best outcome. Well, yes. He spilled some of Charlie's <coughs> tomato juice and then left her in an alley. And then an animatronic named The Puppet, who we come to see in FNAF 2, take possess the best game ever. Uh, tries possess... Let's just say Charlie goes on to possess the puppet. Yeah. And, uh, what happened next again? 1983? Uh, now, if somebody tells me that the bite of 83 is the bite of 87, Freddy Fazbear... Fre <laughs> Freddy Fazbear? Freddy, Freddy Fazbear is going to haunt your bedroom tonight. Well, there are, there are multiple games in the series, but, you know, sis, I just realized... What? We're getting somewhat on off topic of the movie here. We're to we're supposed to be talking about the movie, not the lore. Yeah, just finish up the lore. Okay, so basically in 1985, something horrible, tragic, and unheard of, if you're new to the franchise before, or ever happened. Five kids mysteriously go missing at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. They were, they were, uh, uh, let's they just were say something, I mean, uh, let's just say that some of their tomato milk, tomato juice was spilled during the event. And they were put inside the animatronics for a game of hide and seek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, trying to keep the family friendly here. And, and in 2014, a game developer named Scott Cawthon... I mean, uh, <coughs> sis, not Scott Cawthon. No, sis, that we're talking about the games now. Oh. Scott Cawthon started releasing... The first game came out in 2014 and was a click and point for first-person survival game. I, ex I recommend this game to anyone who's new to the franchise and likes, and likes challenging video games. Oh, and also, I'm pretty sure the first FNAF game is free on Steam. It is? Yeah. Well, I actually didn't know that. But anyways, back on to the topic of the movie. Yeah. Who do you think is your favorite animatronic in the movie, sis? Does the marionette count? The marionette The marionette was never seen in the FNAF movie. And anyone Yes, it was. Where? In, in a bunch of scenes, you could, like, see the outline of, of the puppet. So, yes, I am counting it, so therefore the puppet was my favorite. Also, remember those YouTube cameos we mentioned earlier? Yes. If you re go and re-watch the movie, you can actually see them. Yeah. And Also, I think, like, Daco, Ape, and Ryan are on that Employee of the Month board. And, not to forget... The Living Tombstone played his FNAF 1 song in the, in the closing credits. And they had to play the Five Nights at Freddy's anthem. It's not an anthem. Is it? Well, if you're the fan base, then yes, it's an anthem. <laughs> yeah, well, if you don't remember, which I'm pretty sure my parents told me this wasn't true a billion times... But I heard the FNAF movie was a box office flop. What do you have to say about that, sis? Anybody who did not like the FNAF movie is going to get... I my... hope you die in the fire! Actually, I was expecting you to say something more like Freddy Fazbear will haunt you tonight. No, I said that earlier. Oh. Well... What do you think of the animatronic designs in the movie? Are they any a are they accurate to the 2014 designs? Uh, well, I mean, Sparky the dog. What? Well, I mean, Sparky the dog and Shadow Freddy were in the movie. When I saw Sparky the dog, though, I flipped out. By the Wait. way, by the way, we watched at home with Peacock, so I did not scream in a movie theater. J just for context. Also, the die in a fire thing was a joke. I, I do not want anybody to actually die in the fire. And all and what do you think of the fact that that one of the lore inaccuracies have been gotten wrong? 
Well, sis, do you have an opinion on this? Because the viewers need to know your opinion on those. Probably need to know your opinion on that one accu inaccuracy they got wrong about one of his, about one of the da daughter, about the daughter of William Afton being being Vanessa. But that's just a theory. Okay. You couldn't resist, could you? You just couldn't resist. Yeah, my sister watches a lot of game theory and film theory videos. Although, I do recommend you check out his videos. Yeah. But for some reason, but for some reason he but for some reason he thinks that M&Ms are cannibals, which I do not believe. Sis, that's a candy. How can a candy be a cannibal? I don't know. Anyways, back to the FNAF movie. Do you think Golden Freddy looks any accurate to his original design? No, he looks more like Wither Golden Freddy. Wither Golden Freddy? That exists? Yes, in FNAF 2, stupid. Hey, I'm not stupid. Now, let's just get back to the movie. So, basically, this movie... This movie had some scenes that, as I probably mentioned earlier, did not expect, such as the jump scare scenes. Hey, no, Anne, I have to go pee in the corner. Sis, do you really need to tell, announce your business right when we're in the middle of making a podcast episode while our dad is doing things upstairs? Molly! Now, let's see. All right. <laughs> I liked that it was live action. Did you like that it was live action, sis? Eh. Did Springtrap's design look any accurate? Load shotgun. Spring. <laughs> uh, sis, in FNAF 3, it's referred to as Springtrap. FNAF 2 is a prequel. Sis, stop. Sis, stop. <laughs> Okay, Wait, okay, we're supposed okay. to be doing a podcast episode here. Okay, 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 okay. You keep talking. You keep talking. And I thought it looked, and I knew, and I know that the spring lock mechanism is definitely accurate to the lore. If you haven't played, if you haven't played the FNAF three spring lock mini game yet, I doubt, I, I doubt, I, I recommend that you do play it if you play FNAF, if you've played FNAF three but never gotten the mini game. That way, it'll give you some context as to as to why the spring locks are mentioned as dangerous. Anything else? For example, one year ago, one Mississippi, two Mississippi. Ah! Oh. Yeah, yeah, that was my reaction to Springtrap getting munched. Really? Yeah. That was your reaction one year ago? Yeah. Anyways, if you do, I'm pretty sure you guys have already heard of Five Nights at Freddy's, and if you grew up in the early, in like 2015, you already know that the idea of a FNAF movie has been floating around since then. What do you have to comment on that, sis, that we didn't get a FNAF movie until now? Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> Foxy, calm down. No, I'm the only one this day. Place of, no, no, we're not doing a Pymations reference. No, thank you. Remind me who Pymations is. <gasps> and also says we're supposed to be talking about the FNAF <laughs> movie here. Okay, 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 fine, fine, fine. Now, sis, have we forgotten anything we need to talk about about the movie? We've already talked about how accurate the characters are to their game in-game designs. What about in Five Nights at Freddy's AR? AR? Yeah, they have a bunch of different skins. And no, not like Fortnite skins. Five Nights at Freddy's is sadly not coming to Fortnite. But you know what is? What? Lego. You don't know that for sure. Anyways, my sis here loves Five Nights at Freddy's. She had an entire birthday themed around it recently. She even has this little lefty plushie. Yes, and I put a little chain necklace around him to make him look like a gangster. Also, have you guys ever heard of Five Nights at Freddy's? 
they, and they can't really reply. This is a podcast. Oh yeah. Well, well. If you guys have played the F- FNAF games, let us let us know how you feel about each game. Wait a second. I just came up with a great idea. What? We're gonna trick our dad into playing the first Five Nights at Freddy's game. Dad, sis, you just said that out loud, and you and you. And you and Dad clearly stated that he would re re listen to this whole thing over again. Oh, crud. Anyways, do you, do you guys want a second FNAF movie? Yes. If you do, if you do, let us know. So, uh, I think at the end of the movie, they said there was another scene with the words typed out, Come find me. Which could be from Garrett, I guess. Spoilers if you have not seen the movie, by the way. We forgot to say that in the intro. Yeah. And this guy, this guy, Mike Schmidt, is just, like, every time I see his dream sequence in the movie, it just kind of gets old fast for me. Yeah. And, well, we all know... If you're new to the franchise, you probably are. You, if you're new to the franchise, well, we can, we recommend that you look at the lore and play the games before watching the movie. That will give you a lot of context for some of the stuff that you see and some of the stuff that happens in it. And by the way, in Five Nights at Freddy's, speak lore means story. Oh yeah, but. But with the release of the newest game, Security Breach, and its DLC ruin, I feel like we've got been given a new story, one that we'll probably be trying to piece together until until the late twenty until like twenty twenty eight or something. Which means Mad Pat is stuck in it forever. Yeah, so he's gonna go um, sulk in a corner for a little bit. Yeah, and well. Also, uh, sis, is there anything else we need to talk about about this movie? Well, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, I feel like you missed a lot of lore details. Alright, so now the rest of this is going to go straight towards explaining the story. But, before, before, Ada is going to do some because I... (coughs) need to be refreshed and and if any children are watching this are listening to this podcast right now it would be perfectly advised to have their ears covered because some tomato juice might as well be spilled in this story although we already pretty much explained all of the lore but uh well not all of it but we still explain some of it, right? Oh well, back to the movie. The live action in it is pretty much stunning. I like I like that they introduced the spring the spring lock mechanism that they showcased in the lore. And they actually get to use it on a person. So scary. And there are and again for like the third time here, there is like jump scare scenes that you may not expect. Scary. And there are also and there and the the animatronics are haunted by dead kids. Scary. Yeah. So the FNAF franchise is pretty scary to anyone who who is who's new to the fran it's pretty much really scary to anyone who's new to the franchise. So Yeah, it can actually be pretty scary at times. Uh yeah, I think that's all I have to say about this one. So uh Yeah. Bye. Oh, and don't make and make sure to like and subscribe.